Biggie and Miss Daisy Reed Matilda is underway. So, we're coming very close to the end. You can see Loki is joining us here for at least some of it. He might dash off in a second, having been displaced from his chair. Okay, here we go. The names. There he is. Where are you going, Loki? He wants to be involved as well. Oh, he's very good. The names. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda cried, jumping about a foot in the air. You mean she is your aunt? She brought you up? Yes, Miss Honey said. No wonder you were terrified, Matilda said. The other day we saw her grab a girl by the pigtails and throw her over the playground fence. You haven't seen anything, Miss Honey said. After my father died when I was five and a half, she used to make me bath myself alone. And if she came up and she thought I hadn't washed properly, she would push my head under the water and hold it there. But don't get me started on what she used to do. That won't help us at all. No, said Matilda, it won't. We came here, Miss Honey said, to talk about you. And the whole time, I've been talking about nothing but myself. I feel like a fool. I am much more interested in just how much you can do with those amazing eyes of yours. I can move things, Matilda said. I know I can. I can push things over. How would you like it, Miss Honey said, if we made some very cautious experiments to see just how much you can move and push? Quite surprisingly, Matilda said, if you don't mind, Miss Honey, I think I would rather not. I want to go home now and think about some, some of the, all the things that I've heard this afternoon. Miss Honey stood up at once. <clears throat> of course, she said, I've kept you here far too long. Your mother will start to worry. She never does that, Matilda said, smiling. But I would like to go home now, please, if you don't mind. Come along then, Miss Honey said. I'm sorry I gave you such a rotten tea. You didn't at all, Matilda said. I loved it. <clears throat> the two of them <clears throat> the two of them walked all the way home in complete silence. Miss Honey sensed that Matilda wanted it that way. The child seemed so lost in thought she hardly looked where she was walking, and when they reached the gate of Matilda's home, Miss Honey said, You had better forget everything I told you this afternoon. I won't promise to do that, Matilda said, but I will promise not to talk to anyone about any talk about it to anyone anymore, not even to you. I think that would be wise, Miss Honey said. I won't promise to stop thinking about it, though, Miss Honey. <clears throat> I've been thinking about it all the way back from your cottage, and I believe I've just got a tiny bit of an idea. You mustn't, Miss Honey said. Please forget it. I would like to ask you three last things before I stop talking about it, Matilda said. Please, will you answer them, Miss Honey? Miss Honey smiled. It was extraordinary, she told herself. How this little snippet of a girl seemed to suddenly be taking charge of her problems, and with such authority too. Well, she said, that depends on what the questions are. The first thing is, Matilda said, what did Miss Trunchbull call your father when they were around the house at home? I'm sure she called him Magnus, Miss Honey said. That was his first name. And what did your father call Miss Trunchbull? Her name is Agatha, Miss Honey said. That that that's what he would have called her. And, <clears throat> and lastly, Matilda said, what did your father and Miss Trunchbull call you around the house? They called me Jenny, Miss Honey said. Matilda pondered these answers very carefully. Let me make sure I've got them right, she said. In the house at home, your father was Magnus, Miss Trunchbull was Agatha, and you were Jenny. Am I right? That's correct, Miss Honey said. Thank you, Matilda said. And now I won't mention the subject anymore. Miss Honey wondered what on earth was going on in the mind of this child. Don't do anything silly, she said. Matilda laughed and turned away and ran up the path to her front door, calling out as she went. Goodbye, Miss Honey. Thank you so much for the tea. That was a very short one, so let's have a look at the next chapter and see what happens 
look he's got off he's after knocking all the pens off my table so hopefully he's finished the practice matilda found the house empty as usual her father was not yet back from work and her mother was not yet back from bingo and her brother might be anywhere she went straight into the living room and opened the drawer of the sideboard where she knew her father kept a box of pens she took one out and carried it up to her bedroom and shut herself in. Now for the practice, she told herself. It's going to be tough, but I'm determined to do it. Her plan for helping Miss Honey was beginning to form beautifully in her mind. She now had it in almost every detail, but in the end it all depended on her being able to do one very special thing with her eye power. She knew she wouldn't manage it right away. But she felt fairly confident that with a great deal of practice and effort, she would succeed in the end. The cigar was... The pen was essential. It was a, perhaps a bit thicker than she would have liked, but the weight was about right. It would be fine for practicing with. There was a small dressing table in Matilda's bedroom with her hairbrush and comb on it and two library books. She cleared those things to one side and laid the pen down in the middle of the dressing table. Then she walked away and sat on the end, end of her bed. She was now about 10 feet from the pen. She settled herself and began to concentrate. <clears throat> Very quickly, this time she felt the electricity beginning to flow inside her head, gathering itself behind the eyes and the eyes became hot and millions of tiny invisible hands began pushing out like sparks towards the pen. Move, she whispered, and to her intense surprise, almost at once, the pen with its little red and gold band around the middle rolled away across the top of the dressing table and fell on the carpet. Matilda had enjoyed that. It was lovely doing it. It had felt as though sparks were going round and round inside her head and flashing out of her eyes. It had given her a sense of power that was almost ethereal. And how quick it had been this time. How simple. She crossed the bedroom and picked up the pen and put it back on the table. Now for the difficult one, she thought. What if I have the power to push? then surely I also must have the power to lift. I must learn how to lift it right up into the air and keep it there. It's not a very heavy thing, a pen. She sat down on the end, end of the bed and started again. It was easy now to summon up the power behind her eyes. It was like pushing a trigger in the brain. Lift, she whispered, lift, lift. At first the pen started to roll away. But then, with Matilda concentrating fiercely, one end of it slowly lifted about an inch off the tabletop. With colossal effort, she managed to hold it there for about ten seconds. Then it fell back again. Phew, she gasped. I'm getting it. I'm starting to do it. For the next hour, Matilda kept practising. And in the end, by the sheer power of her eyes, she managed to lift the whole pen clear off the table, about six inches into the air, and hold it there for about a minute. Then, suddenly, she was so exhausted, she fell back on the bed and went to sleep. That was how her mother found her later in the evening. <clears throat> What's the matter with you? the mother said, waking her up. Are you ill? Oh gosh, Matilda said, sitting up and looking around. No, I'm all right. I was a bit tired, that's all. From then on, every day after school, Matilda shut herself in her room and practised with the pen. And soon it all began to come together in the most wonderful way. Six days later, by the following Wednesday evening, she was able to not only lift the pen up in the air, but also to move it around exactly as she wished. It was beautiful. I can do it, she cried. I really can do it. I can pick the pen up just with my eye power and push it and pull it in the air any way I want. All she had to do now was put her great plan into action. 
It was a very short one today. The two chapters were very short, but we're so, so close to the end of the book now. So I hope you have a lovely evening tonight and we'll find out what the third miracle is tomorrow. Bye, guys.